Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, we will be focusing on a very, very important topic, and that are the eigenmodes and eigenfrequencies. So let's jump right in. We have a system, and we already linearized that system. So we have a mass matrix and a stiffness matrix, M and K. We have no external force and no damping. If we assume a stable position, our mass matrix is symmetric and positive definite, that is regardless if it's stable or not, but matrix K is symmetric and positive definite if we have a stable position. So that means that the eigenvalues are either positive or greater than zero. Now we want to solve this system and we have to propose a solution for our Q and we propose this solution. So we have our Q. So this is a Q is Q1, Q2, Q3, and so forth, is just a constant, uh, a vector of constants. So that is x1, x2, x3, x4. And we modulate those constants with a time function phi. So we have one time function for all degrees of freedom. For example, we have time functions e minus 10t. So this would be our time function. And this, this vector of constants basically is called an eigenshape. So it's a ratio of those degrees of freedom and they never change. So this is what we get. We have a vector and a time function. And now we have to work with that proposed solution. So if we derive it twice with time, we get x theta, uh, x phi double dot, because x is not dependent on time. And we just insert it right there. And we get this equation. Again, we are not interested in the, not, in the trivial solution. So x, we do not accept x as zero. So we further, uh, we remove, remove m x phi double dot to the left and divide by phi here. So we get x, uh, kx times minus phi double dot divided by phi mx. So now we can set this constant right here to a new value. So we call it for now just lambda. And we know that this lambda is constant in time and it is real and negative. Why does it have to be constant? Because this is not dependent on time and this is not dependent on time. Only these two, so phi dot and uh, phi double dot and phi divided by phi has to be constant in time because the term on the left and right are both constant in time. And because this is positive, or better to say, if we pre-multiply with x, this is positive. If we pre-multiply with x on the right, this is also positive. And this value has to be also positive. And this can be only positive if lambda squared itself is negative. So we get minus minus lambda squared will look something like this. So lambda is real and negative because I remove that because this is real and positive. This is real and positive and we have a minus here. So lambda has to be real and negative. So this must be true and this can only be true if lambda is imaginary. So now we can just set our constant that we had before to phi double dot divided by phi is omega minus omega squared. So here we already have something that may or may not be our eigenfrequency. So now if we substitute this term that we had here with omega, we have this one. So we have x uh, kx is equal to omega squared mx. So x is again our eigen shape that we had before. And now we continue to work with that. So now we again, sub we subtract the right part of the equation from the left part, and we get this one. We remove x, 
Again, we do not work with x as zero for a trivial solution. So just like with the in the videos we saw beforehand, if we do not accept x, so if we do not accept x as zero, this matrix can't have a inverse and a matrix does not have a inverse when the determinant is zero. So we need to set the, omega, the omegas in such a way that the determinant will be zero. So we get omega one and omega two and so forth. And these are our eigenvalues. If we now found the eigenvalues, we can insert them back. So now we have omega r in this equation and we can find a omega x, uh, a r x, uh, sorry, x r that will fulfill this equation. So we have now found eigenvalues and now we can find those eigenmodes that we talked about before. So we just found that one, uh, sorry, we just found this vector by doing just simple algebraic uh, operations. So let's summarize again. We proposed a solution, this one, we derived it twice, inserted it in our uh, linearized equations of motion, these ones. Then we introduced a new constant that is lambda. We pre-multiplied x and showed that lambda has to be minus lambda squared has to be larger than zero. This means lambda is imaginary. Then we got a omega. We inserted this omega back into the equations set omega in such a way that the determinant is zero and then inserted this omega back into the equation and found our eigenmodes. Now, are those eigenvalues that we found here actually our eigenfrequency? Well, not really, but close enough because the eigenvalues that we found are in radians per second, but the frequency is one per second. So to get the frequency, you just have to divide by two pi, but we will continue working with that as if it is our eigenfrequency. So what if we have a special eigenfrequency? For example, that omega r is zero. That means that k times xr is zero because this part, well, let's write it again. We have k minus omega r squared m xr is zero. If omega is zero, this is gone and we're only left with that part. So now we call this eigenmode u and u is our rigid body mode. So if a structure is having n eigenmodes, these one here, it will have m rigid body modes. So this is the degree of singularity of k. So how many eigenvalues of our matrix k are zero and the rest is elastic body modes. So we cannot, we can say that if we have a singularity of k, we will have a rigid body mode and all the other rigid uh, modes will be elastic body modes. And rigid body modes are, for example, if we look at a, yeah, let's take a cable. One eigenmode would be just the oscillation back and forth or like this. And a rigid body mode is where the cable moves through space but introduces no elasticity. So this is a rigid body mode. Now we of course wanna know, well, how does the actual time function look like? And because we know that this is what we introduced, we have this equation, so this is just a simple multiplication and shifting to the left again, we know that the solution needs to have this form that we have alpha times cosine omega t and beta times sine omega rt. And what if we have a omega that is zero? In this case, phi, uh, uh, phi double dot is zero, phi dot is beta and phi itself is gamma times beta times t. So this is the time. You might ask yourself, well, how do I determine those constants? And these constants are determined with the initial 
conditions of that system, but this is for another video. Let's recap what we did so far. So this is a lot, and this is also very, very important to understand. So we had a, let's even change colors. Can't see anything, but I think it's worth it. So let's go to green. We had our system. It's a linear system around a stable configuration. We propose that this response will look something like this. We have a eigen shape and we have a time function that is modulating all and all the eigen shape at once. So all degrees of freedom are changed with the same time function. We derived that time function twice and inserted into our linearized equations of motion. We did some magic where we shifted, where we subtracted and divided, and we got to the point where we introduced the lambda. We said that the lambda must be, or minus lambda squared must be larger than zero, so it's imaginary, and we introduced that omega, omega squared. By doing so, we got to this very important equation, and because we do not accept x as uh, x0 as a solution, we needed to find the determinant. We set the determinant in such a way that it is zero, so there is no inverse. And by doing that, we found the eigenvalues. With the help of the eigenvalues, we found, after inserting them back into the equation, we found our eigenmodes. And with those eigenmodes, and we skip this part, and this and this function, we can solve the linearized equations of motion. So to do so, we also need the constants right here. And these are determined again, like I said, with the initial conditions. And we will do that in another video. I hope this video gave you a small introduction of how we even get the eigenmodes and the eigenfrequencies. And that is that it is not very difficult to do. So you just have to do simple math operations. This is pure algebra. There is nothing to, there's no magic to it. And if you have like any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. I will do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope this video helped you a little bit and I'll see you next time.